I came home yesterday and that was the day when my silver dollars here were actually breeding. So I'm standing here with the tank behind me completely packed with silver dollar eggs. And in a moment I will show you how I care for the eggs and how I will care for the fry and everything around that. And if you're new to my channel, I'm gonna show you how we got to this point. So as you can see behind me here, I've put some cover over the tank to try to protect the eggs and block out the direct light. I'm not completely sure this is actually necessary, but I want to make sure that I get as many as possible to actually hatch. So I had to do a couple of things before I actually moved the silver dollars that I was breeding in this tank. My water is actually pretty hard here, so I had to use this uh, pH KH minus. This will take out the carbonate hardness and this makes the water drop a little bit in pH. And the pH level I have in this tank right now is around 6.8 and that seems to work just fine. I also added in this uh, Happy Life Rio Nequa and this is a kind of black water extract. It doesn't really make the water go brown or anything but it contains tannins and essential things that uh, mimics the black water where they come from. And this also seems to be a pretty good thing to add. Now about the temperature, I found that the sweet spot for breeding silver dollars are 27 degrees celsius. I've done it several times and it always works. So first of all, let's take a look at the silver dollar in general. The silver dollar is a tetra and they are schooling fish, so they have to be kept in groups and I would say that at least five of them is just fine. It is a relatively large tetra. They reach about 15 centimeters approximately. And if you're planning to breed them, you need to know how to determine if it's a male or female. Now the males are a little bit more colorful and they have this elongated anal fin. The females tend to be a little bit bigger and they lack the elongated anal fin. So their anal fin is completely straight. And now I'm gonna show you how to actually care for the eggs here. Now this is the most hard part of them all. So once the silver dollars has actually laid all their eggs, the best thing to do is to remove the breeding pair or pairs. Now once they're out of the tank, it's time to have a good look at the eggs. Now many of the eggs will not be fertilized and as soon as you see eggs turning white or whitish, they need to be removed instantly. And this is a kind of mold that forms on the eggs and this will spread to even healthy eggs. That's why we need to remove them. So the way I do this, is to actually take a one-time syringe. You can also use a little air hosing or something. You have to <laughs> kind of come up with something that works for you. And you just remove all the eggs that are turning bad. And this has to be repeated day in and day out. Now the eggs that are healthy and are fertilized, they should be brown and you can actually see the little fish forming slowly inside them. Now the eggs will hatch after two to three days. So under this period, it's a lot of work removing eggs that are going bad basically. The one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the parents will not eat their own eggs. But if you keep more like a small group or something, the ones that are not currently breathing, they will eat the eggs. So this is something that is good to know. Also providing them with spawning mops provides a perfect place for them to scatter the eggs. And those two spawning mobs I have here, they're just made of two rocks and I've tied some acrylic yarn to them. Now the reason for these baskets here is basically just so I can show you better. But it does serve another purpose and that is to split up the eggs a little bit. So if I get moldy ones, uh, I don't have those big egg clusters. It's a little bit more easy to manage. So once they're all hatched, they will lay on the bottom like this. They will flap around a little bit if you get close or they get scared by something. And there's not really much to do right now. Now we just have to wait until they get to the free swimming stage and then we can start feeding them. The best food for them is freshly hatched brine shrimp. I will not cover that in this video, I will show you in the next one. And usually they get free swimming after a week, maybe a little bit longer. So now it's just a matter of waiting for them to get to the free swimming stage. I will cover this in the next video. Now if you found this helpful and enjoyed this, please hit the like button. And make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss when I release the next video when we're gonna take care of them when they're free swimming. I will cover everything you need to know about these and how to raise them until they get big enough to sell or put in another tank or whatever you plan to do with them. And that is all for today's video. 
and I'll see you next time.